The dunes are divided into zones. The dune area closest to the ocean is known as the fore dune. The back dunes are further away from the direct effects of the ocean. Here the vegetation and the dunes are more stabilized, as seen in this photo of coyote brush in the foreground. A few years ago, there weren't as many native plants on these dunes. Much of the area was covered by ice plant, a non-native plant that was planted in an effort to stabilize the dunes. The ice plant crowded out most of the existing native plants, which provided the food for insects and birds. Ongoing habitat restoration has removed much of the ice plant, and native plants have been planted in its place. That's one really big pile of ice plant. With the dense ice plant gone, native insects and birds can make their homes in the dunes. Killdeer are commonly seen here. They can feed and even nest among the native plants, something that would have been impossible when the ice plant covered the sand. In addition to the dunes, there are three distinct wetland areas at Pacifica State Beach. One of them is where San Pedro Creek flows out to the ocean. Sometimes the creek water is hidden by thick vegetation because of nutrients and sediments washed downstream. Garden plants like this nasturtium are carried down from upstream also. These are some of the biological and human impacts in this creek system. This area is constantly changing depending on the season and the amount of water entering and exiting the system. As the creek gets closer to the beach, ocean winter storms surging into the creek can change the look of the area. Yeah. Plants that tolerate salt water become established and thrive here. The mouth of San Pedro Creek is dominated by tules, sedges, and rushes. These plants must have water available to them year round. Some are adapted to be able to live in brackish water and when there are storm surges, the high tides allow the salt water to flow into the mouth of the creek. Here are some of our most showy flowering plants along the creek. The large monkey flower begins blooming in January and can still be seen in flower in the fall. Its odd name supposedly refers to some similarity between the flowers and the face of a monkey. The Pacific silverweed is another bright yellow flower found along the creek. It gets its name from the silky white hairs on the underside of its leaves, giving them the silver appearance. While its flowers are less showy, the watercress plants make an impressive display on the banks, growing all the way out into the water. Moving north along the beach, the second wetland you come to is the Dune Rush wetland a low point between the dunes. The dune rush indicates that there is water there hidden underground. The plants have a deep root system that taps into the water. The rushes don't look particularly showy, but you'd be amazed how beautiful their small flowers are. Look closely and you may see the flowers blooming in the spring, summer, and early fall. Further north is our third wetland, a willow and cattail marsh. During the wet season, there is standing water here, and during the summer, it is a boggy area. The arroyo willow forms a wind-blown thicket. The arroyo willow leaves shown here have red bumps that are insect galls of one of our native wasps. The cattails cat are shown here with their large flowering spikes. In the spring and summer, many birds, such as the red-winged blackbird and the common yellowthroat, seek out such mar marshy habitats to build their nests. In the fall and winter, birds are still attracted to the dense willows, finding shelter there from predators and winter storms. The wetland also provides a home for many species of small mammals, amphibians, and reptiles. Moving south from Pacifica State Beach, we come to Pedro Point Headlands. Here, on the steep, rugged slopes, we find an example of an upland coastal bluff scrub plant community. This area is dominated by woody shrubs, 
such as coyote brush and California sagebrush. This plant community is typically what you see as you go up and down the San Mateo coast. The California sagebrush thrives on the steep coastal slopes. Here it is exposed to the drying effects of wind and sun. If it's a warm day, you can usually smell the sage before you see it. It blooms late in the season with numerous small white, yellow, green flowers. The early settlers used it in a form of a strong wash to bathe wounds and put sprays of it in their beds to drive away fleas. Here we get the upright form of coyote brush, whereas on the dunes the coyote brush is very low growing. Coyote brush flowers in the fall and gets its name from the hair-like seed parts that look like a coyote walked by and left its fur on the plant. The woody shrubs are intertwined with colorful herbaceous plants that complement each other. Some are dependent on the plants they grow near and around. We have two species of paintbrush that can be found in the co local coastal scrub. Large tubular flowers provide food for hummingbirds and in return the flowers are pollinated by them. The coffee berry is another common shrub found in the coastal scrub. Birds love its red berries and spread its seeds widely. It gets its name from its seeds, which somewhat resemble coffee beans. The coffee berry has strong laxative properties, however, and cannot be used as a substitute for coffee. When you see the coastal hillsides turning orange, you know the sticky monkey flower is in bloom. This shrub is a cousin of the large monkey flower we saw growing along San Pedro Creek. Lizard tail is one of the most common plants along the San Mateo coast. It flowers in the summer, but can be found in bloom all year round. Lizard tail is a very hardy plant. When we started removing ice plant at Pigeon Point Lighthouse, it was the native plant that had best survived under the cover of ice plant and reestablished itself most quickly. Almost everyone wants to avoid poison oak, but it too has its place in the coastal scrub. Animals are very dependent on the flowers, leaves, and fruit of the poison oak. It is one of our most beautiful fall color plants. It is good to avoid touching poison oak, but you can still enjoy its beauty. Coyote mint, a shrub found only in California, adds beautiful color and minty aroma along hiking trails. It attracts bees and butterflies, which get their nectar from the tubular flowers and pollinate the plants. This plant-insect interaction is vitally important to seed production for the next year. Douglas iris flowers early in the spring, but blooms for as long as three months. The leaves of the iris were an important source of rope and basket-making fiber in Northern California for a large number of the Native American tribes. Cal parsnip is a tall plant with large leaves and large flowering heads and many flowers. Related to it is Coast Angelica. Both are spectacular plants that can be seen along the San Mateo coast from every trail and roadside. These very similar plants can be told apart by looking closely at their leaf structure. The coast angelica has more divided leaves and the cow parsnip has three large divided leaves.